So now we're gonna show how to splint a leg. We'll start with splinting of an ankle and then we'll move on to casting of an ankle. This would be for an injury in the heel, the foot, the ankle, or in the distal tibia. And basically all the splinting that we're gonna show can also be used and extended up above the knee if you have a higher uh, level injury. I think it's easiest if you're splinting the leg to have the patient sit up. Even in an acute setting, most patients will still be able to sit up. Sometimes in emergency rooms, they'll have a little bench that looks like a cobbler's bench, and the, the patient can put their foot on the little uh, shoe-shaped thing in the, in the emergency department. Otherwise, just use your knee. I think that's the, the easiest thing to do. It's fairly comfortable even if somebody has an acute injury. If not, then you can have the patient lying down and have somebody holding them at the toes, which I think personally is less comfortable. So if you want them just to be hanging down, you can let the foot hang down. Um, you want to start with your base layer is a layer of padding. This is the case even, in my opinion, even if you use the one-step splinting that is available, I still think that it is better, especially in an acute injury um, that you expect to have significant swelling, to go ahead and put some of this on. This is the uh, base layer padding that we prefer to use. It, um, especially at the ends, if you're going to use a one-step splint, if you put it on at the ends of the splint, it can help keep that rough end of the fiberglass from rubbing on the skin and creating a sore. Um, Specifically, in a splint, whether it's fiberglass or plaster, you have to remember it, you're putting it on for an acute injury and there will be swelling, so you don't ever want anything to be too tight. If you haven't done a reduction, a splint should be plenty thick with the padding. I would go for two to three layers, just like on the upper extremity. You make it a little thicker at the ends because that's where the ends of the splint and a little bit more movement is going to occur and more likely to have some rubbing in that area. So you take your, if you're using the rolls, which is the cheapest way to go, um, you take your splint, you can measure it out. If you're gonna do a posterior splint, you wanna start from top to bottom. If, uh, as I'm splinting here, this would be for an ankle fracture. You can come out further, cover all the way over the toes, in my opinion, if you have a fracture from anywhere uh, from the ankle down into the foot. So if you have a midfoot fracture or a calcaneus fracture, you really actually want to support all the way down to the metatarsal heads. So if you can measure your length, like so, pick out where your length is going to be for that segment of your splint. I like to drop the roll. Dr. Bray likes to hang it down and make pedals. Either way, you wind up with the same thing. This would not be thick enough for someone of her age, but for these purposes, I'm not going to make it thicker than that. This is the posterior slab, which will go there. You could also measure and do a separate U slab, which would go here. In the upper extremity, that U is called a sugar tong. If you wanted to do a separate U, usually turns out to be the same size as the posterior. So now I'll have a posterior and a U. Again, this is not enough thicknesses. You want to have about 10 to 12 thicknesses. Usually you need a little bit more for the lower extremity than you need for the upper extremity because of the um, tendency for people to put more weight accidentally or on purpose on their leg. Now we've wet our layers of plaster. And if we just simply put the posterior slip on here, this is not going to be strong enough. Let me grab a this is not going to be strong enough to support any ankle. In a smaller child, you would use a two inch or a, a narrower uh, plaster and it probably still wouldn't be strong enough even to support a two year old's ankle. So it would be better and safer if you went ahead and added the U portion of it. And I like to just temporarily put this on so that you get control of your pieces like so. Then we'll take our other slab that we made and we're going to put a U around it like that. Sugar tong for the ankle, a U slab, a posterior and a U, or a trilaminar splint are all names that this goes by. You wrap that on. You do not want the pieces of the front to come together and meet in the front, meet up with the back one and all that, because then you're basically putting on a cast. The idea of a splint is that it is to allow for some expansion with swelling because it's an acute injury. After you put on your 
support, whether it be fiberglass or, or plaster. You want to put something on over it. You can use your bias cut stockinette. You can use an ace bandage. You can use coband, but no matter what you use, don't wrap it tightly. We always prefer, with rare exceptions, the ankle to be as close to neutral dorsiflexion as, as uh, the patient will tolerate you getting. Um, so you put it on, you can give everything a little bit of a squeeze. I, when you're dealing with kids, you say we're giving it a hug with our hands, give it a little hug, make sure that it fits properly. Never ever put compression on the heel. And then if the patient is lying down, um, don't ever take their leg and then set it down on the table. Because if you set that down on the table and say, okay, it's splinted now, and you set that down, you're putting a dent in your splint and you're gonna create a huge pressure sore over that heel. And then even two days later when they come to us to have their uh, splint changed to a cast, they'll have a grade two pressure ulcer on their heel.